of San Francisco, a Quinn Martin production. Starring Carl Malden. Also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars, Janice Rule, James Olson. Tonight's episode, The First Day of Forever. It's not a hurry. I just thought if you need all that stuff, maybe you've got the wrong girl. Who? <laughs> Bartender, may I have another champagne cocktail, please? Hey, come on. You don't need anything by it, you know? Come on, baby. Look, sales are my game. Would I pay the price if I didn't like the package? Hmm? Is it far to your place? I mean, is it walking distance? No, it's a taxi ride. Why? Well, I don't know if they padded the bill, or maybe I drank more than I thought I did. Hey, look, uh, it's getting kind of laid out, and well, don't be sore. But it, it's a, it's a little tough to handle your kind of action on the size of my expense account, you know. Sure, I know. You're a good kid. I mean that. Here. Right here. Just stay right here. Somebody call a cop. Somebody call a cop! You mean the only 12 nights I've had off all year? All right, how about tomorrow? Dodgers again? Huh? We can go out early, grab a couple of hot dogs, watch batting practice? Mike, Mike, you ever stop to think maybe I want to see someone with a face a little prettier than yours once in a while? I didn't know how much you hated baseball. I could take that person. Stone. 219. Got it. 219 at Jackson and Montgomery. That's another cutting. Think maybe that's our man? Right into town. Let's move. A 
Well, thank you. Good evening, Lieutenant. Morgan, what do we got? Well, the M.O. looks like the same kook as before. It's another hooker? Uh, Beverly Landau, no middle initial, no age given. Lives at 813 Shea Tower, so business must be pretty good. Where is she? The ambulance just left for general. Still alive? A uh, bad slash on the left forearm, that's all. Pretty shook up lady, though. Three of her sisters in the morgue in the last five weeks, I'd say she got off lucky. Anybody see it? Well, a uh, truck driver from an all-night pharmacy. He said he had a rush delivery, so I let him go. His name and number's here in the report. What else have you got? Well, uh, he says he hit this guy when he, when he dashed out on the street after the hooker. He said the guy went down pretty hard, and as he ran off, he was limping. Like, maybe he hurt his right leg pretty bad. Is there any other description? Well, not much. Uh, he said the guy was wearing a dark hat, dark top coat, dark trousers, and dark shoes. Well, we have a lady in the hospital having a dark night. So let's move it. See you, Morgan. It's gonna be pretty sore for a while. I'll write up a prescription for you. Would you like something to help you sleep? To sleep, a chance to dream. Why not? What can happen? I'll leave the prescription at the nurse's station. Thank you, good doctor. Barry, do we have a few minutes? Sure. Do you happen to have a cigarette? Sorry. No. Miss Landau. Now that you've had some time, do you think you could uh, identify the attacker? I'll leave all that behind me. And that's what time will do, Lieutenant. I'm very tired now, and I'd like to go home. Well, how about the man you left the lounge with? It wasn't him. You're sure? Quite positive. It wasn't anybody you knew? Why should it be? We checked your record, Miss Landau. We know you've been booked for prostitution. Well... Mayor always said he's got the country's finest force. No, it wasn't anyone I've ever seen before. Maybe if you came down the headquarters and took a look at some pictures. I've got enough pictures, all in living color. I just want to go home. And maybe you'll change your mind on the way. I can take a taxi. What would the mayor say then? offer you a drink, Lieutenant, but I know you're on duty. Yeah, well, we'll just look around. It'll help fill out the report. <laughs> Bedrooms upstairs? Mm-hmm. That's a beautiful kitchen. Thank you. Hey, Steve, you know what it's got? What? It's got one of those, um, oh, uh, blenders filled right into the countertop. You like books? Yes. Say, uh, I don't like that fire escape right off your balcony. Mm. It was a terrific selling point when I took the lease. Yeah, I know, I know. Like feeding uh, fastballs to McCovey. <laughs> what? Oh, too easy. Way too easy. Steve? Lady said no. Oh, I think she meant maybe. What do you say? Three days? Lieutenant. We're dealing with a maniac, Miss Landau. In less than five weeks, he's butchered three other... You don't have to be delicate. I've read the papers. Excuse me. Hello? Who is this? I asked you where you'd been, Beverly. Did you think I'd let you go? Who are you? Who are you? That doesn't matter. What matters is you. You must die. You will die. Pack a bag.
More sex offenders. That's right. After a while, they all start to look the same. Yeah, I suppose they would. Yeah, I'll call you at 0800. Thanks. We work for a good man, you know that? He gave us the night off? Oh, he gave us the green light. Sure he did to keep that red one burning. Listen, buddy boy. We're not working vice now. And we've got no charges against that woman. What we've got is a homicidal maniac out there running around loose, and he's a sick man. Okay, Mike. Well, I mean it. Okay. He's counting on people like you, me, everybody. Betting that we don't care. Well, I care. I want to catch him. And I don't care why you care, but you care. You got that? All right. What's the blueprint? Well, if this maniac is looking for an address, we'll keep her out of her own place, but we'll have a team in it and on it. What do you want to do with her? Well, you hide her out while I'm beating the bushes. What? Okay, all right. Where do I take her? Malone said to keep it cheap. How about over on the Embarcadero, the Kennedy? Lovely spot. Terrific. Just phone in the room number and don't let anyone in but me. Okay. One more thing. Get her trick book. I want to cross-check it with the one we found on the last girl. Kelly, Stone homicide. I want a woman officer on a stakeout team. 813 Shade Towers. Yeah, that would be fine. A three-ship rotation. Good. One man in and one man out. Right. I've got the key. Go send him down. There's got to be over 200 names in this thing. Anybody we know? I always thought you were a voyeur. I find out what that means. You could be back driving a black and white again. Well, you'll know where to find me, that's for sure. Okay. 408. Looks over the water. You and the uh, missus will love it. Where's the telephone? Top of the stairs. Why didn't you tell him? The clerk. So he can tell somebody else. Stone's office, please. Who's this, Les? Hi, Steve. Is Mike there? No, just tell him it's room 408 and the telephone number is 362-9296. No, wait a minute. You better give him to me. Hang on. Look, don't run off, all right? Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Wait a minute, is that J O S L I N? Yeah. 
All right, I got it. Look, tell, uh, tell Mike I'll take care of it. He is? <laughs> All right, I'll see you later. The guy's on the street already. What? He, uh, he ran your book through the computer with the last victims, and he came up with six names that you both knew. You recognize any of them? Nope. Not one? Sorry. I think the room's down here on the left. Well, darling, I think we just must do something about your expense account. Close the door, would you please? Yes, sir. Ah, oh, looks out over the water. Terrific. Look, I don't feel any more comfortable about this than you do, but we're just going to have to sit tight while Mike does some checking. Mike? Mm-hmm. And you're? Inspector Keller. Miss Landau. Nice to meet you. Don't talk much, do you, Inspector? Peeling paint, torn curtains, cracked lampshade. Terrific. <laughs> Just about says it all, doesn't it? Everything you've been thinking about me. That's my, um, uh, what do you call it, M.O.? Look, if you want, we can go to another place. No need. If the shoe fits, right? Hey. You're a reader. Ever make it through this cover to cover? No. You've had a long night. In case you get cold. Howard Jocelyn. I know you. Lieutenant Stone. Keeping pretty late hours, aren't you? Show me something that says that's illegal. Well, show me something that proves where you've been between 10 and 11 last night. Ah, no, look. Here or downtown, Jocelyn? Doesn't matter to me. Oh, I hope it does, Lieutenant. I really hope it does. You see, I was on a great big bird of about 30,000. Maybe somewhere just east of Denver. Maybe won't make it. 
How about the plane ticket? Inside pocket. Easy. Right hand. Thank you. Lieutenant Stone, is it? That's right, Mr. Graham. It's just that my secretary kind of took me by surprise when she said police. Well, you don't happen to have a parking ticket out, do you? <laughs> I just don't have that much to do with the police. Most people don't. Sit down, Lieutenant. Thank you. May I get you something? Coffee? No, no, no I'm happy. Thank you. All right. That, that's an interesting piece. 
Or you're thinking it's a little out of place here in this jungle? Something like that. Just a reminder of humility. I started out in the basement with a business college course in accounting, a suit with two pairs of pants and a pair of shoes that didn't go with either pair of pants. <laughs> and I've been given a lot through the years. I don't want to forget what others have given. Is there something I can do for you, Lieutenant? Uh, yes, Mr. Graham. Did you happen to know a Eleanor Palmer? Palmer? No, no, not that I recall. Beverly Landau? May I ask what this is all about? It's a homicide investigation, Mr. Graham. You see, uh, you say that you didn't know either of those women, and yet they both carried your name and telephone number. Now, how do you suppose that happened? Eleanor. Poor Eleanor. I never knew her last name. Well, you knew she's dead. Yes, that... Oh, it's horrible. Beverly Landau? Yes. Of course, nothing's happened to Beverly. Well, she was hurt, and I'm trying to find out who did it. Hurt? Yes. Oh, n Am I interpreting you correctly? You think I'm the one who's going around stabbing those girls? No, I think that whoever did it knew them, and that the two of them knew you. But surely there were others. Yes. It wasn't me, Lieutenant. Strange. It's all in your point of view, isn't it? I mean, from up here, everyone is the same down there. But I met Beverly Landau down there at a time when I needed a lot more than I could pay for. If she's in trouble now, I'd like to help her. Oh, I'm sure she'll be all right, Mr. Graham. And if you'd rather I left through another door... Why... Oh, no, certainly not. If there's anything I can do to help, just let me know. I will, Mr. Graham. Thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> You didn't. No. No, just the pages that were turned down. I don't believe it. <laughs> How's your arm? It's still there. I got some instant coffee in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Instant or the better. No, oh, hold it. I should earn my keep somehow. Wonder what old Dr. Freud would say about that. So speaking about motivations and all that jazz, why would a guy who's 20... 20 what? 28. Nobody's 28. Just had a birthday. I mean, like you like to read. And you've gone to college, right? Right. Well, why the police department? Steve.
Hey. Yeah, room service. Ah, uh, Lieutenant, you saved us from drinking the hemlock. What? Socrates. That's how he killed himself. He drank the hemlock. Oh, yeah, hemlock. I know, yeah, Socrates. Yeah, wasn't that that, um... Wait a minute now, um... Oh, that small, crazy Frenchman who became emperor when he married that, um... Help me out. You know who I mean, that, um... Uh, Elizabeth, right? <laughs> I think we just fed McCovey a fastball there. Believe me, it's not the first time. Yeah, get them while they're hot. Sinkers. Well, you got anything? Mm-hmm. Three fast strikes. You're up, buddy boy. Oh, wait a minute. What about the uh, phone tap? No calls. Nothing? Nope. Not as of 20 minutes ago. And while you're looking for that guy with a bad leg, I'm going to be resting two tired feet. <laughs> Mike, I have to talk to you outside for a minute. Sure. Sure. Steve, take care. Steve, now wait a minute. This was your game plan, okay. not mine. Okay, okay. What is it? I think there was somebody outside the door last night. And I was half asleep, but I heard the door handle footsteps. And when I came out, that window down there was open. I think we ought to get a dust. I think maybe I ought to dust you. I didn't I tell you to keep that door locked? All right, Mike, okay. But if that guy hasn't called yet, maybe I wasn't hearing things. Maybe he phoned her from someplace close by last night, saw us, knows what we're doing with her, where she is. You just keep your thoughts up front, buddy boy. Because if he's on this list, he could be opening a door with a weapon in his hand. Okay, I'll handle it. But you'll get the window. Yeah, I'll get the window. Left the keys in the dresser. Okay. Mike, keep the door locked, all right? Get out of here. Discard. Oh, you broke up that pair of fives, didn't you, eh? Got you on the run. <laughs> oh, I deserve it. I was thinking... Oh, I sort of got angry with Steve last night for picking this place. He didn't pick it, I did. Sorry, but we're on a budget. Yeah, well, why'd you pick him? Steve had to. What do you mean he had to? He cares. Say, what did you discard the time before last? Oh, nine of hearts, mm-hmm. Mike, open up. I told you. Easy on my leg, huh? He says he heard it water skiing at Tahoe. True. Hi, baby. You know this man? Was this the man that attacked you? No. Look, Beverly, you don't have to be afraid. No, it wasn't him. But you do know him. His name is Sonny Lane. But Sonny doesn't kill people with knives. That's not nice. Come on. I mean, business is business. He, uh, he had the girl, Eleanor Palmer. She worked for you, too? I don't know what you're talking you about. You know just what I'm talking no, about, I man. I don't know what you're talking okay, about. Okay, Lane, come on, get lost. Hey, you're looking really good, Bev. Which two? You lose some weight or something? Hey, when are you finished with all this? Work? Everybody sit down. Hey, you come off, you punk. You take a walk. Come on, take a walk. Come on, take a walk. Come on, take a walk. Maybe you could use a cold shower, too. Now, I asked you about all those names. Why didn't you tell me? What was I supposed to say? He was my business manager till I got too old. I'd like a breath of fresh air. I think you both could use some fresh air.
Just keep me posted on the location. that whole scene. It's all right. I'm sorry, too. I, I mean, Mike told me the room wasn't your idea. Let's see if I can do something that is my idea. Is Inspector 81 to headquarters? Go ahead, 81. Hi, can you tell Stone there will be 10-7-M at the wharf rat, please? Roger. 10-7-M. Yeah. M is in meal. At the wharf. You said you wanted some fresh air. It doesn't come any fresher. <laughs> That's terrific. <laughs> you say it's a positive print? Okay. I'm rolling. Listen. I want two backup units to meet me at 1413 Pine Street, 21st floor. Suite 211. Found you, man. The prints on the window we dusted check out to a Lauren Graham. You'll find the IDs on my desk. I'm going after a warrant. You put out a full APV. Suspicion of murder. Oh, smell good. It's fantastic. You want to hear something crazy? Mm -hmm. All the time that I've lived here, I never had one of these. Tastes good? I don't know. I've never had one either. <laughs> to call in a new 10 -7. Could uh, we have our M first? Sure. I mean, over here, there's something so delicious, so scrumptious, yeah. so... Look at that. Is that fresh fresher? Well, I'm sorry, Miss Winters, but I wouldn't be here with a warrant if it weren't important. Yes, I understand, Lieutenant, but it's all a bit strange. Man. Oh, he works so hard. His, his discipline is. Uh... <laughs> Nothing, just picking up a little on the local color. I forgot. You have to look at things a little differently than most people, hmm? Well, I wouldn't say you have to, but it gets that way, yeah. You know, you never answered my question about why. Why I became a cop. Just seen the right thing? Oh, because it's public service. <laughs> no, we don't serve, at least not the way it sounds. We just react against anyone who dares society to deal with them. Guess there has to be somebody around to do that. But why you? Why not somebody else? Guess that's what's wrong with a lot of things, isn't it? Hmm. 
the hooker and the cop. The whole world spits on us, but they can't get along without us. You know that we work the same lousy hours, see the same lousy people, and we get the same lousy steers if anybody happens to know what we do. Well, somebody's got to do it, so here we are. I don't think you like your job. I survive. That's what it's all about, isn't it? I don't think so, no. Oh, come on, baby. It's been that way from, from forever. Well, forever can start whenever you say so. As long as you're around to make a choice. That's, that's what that book was all about you laid on me last night. Choice. And do me a favor. Will you, will you cut out the baby jazz and just leave that for guys like Sonny Lane? Sure. And it's supposed to change, right? Forget the Sunny Lanes, forget the people, forget all the faces, all the years, all the places. It doesn't come off with makeup, you know. Look at me. No. Now you look at me. Just look. Look. Can you see it? That's you. That's what I see. So don't do any numbers about dignity and self-respect, all right? Let's just let forever start today. Listen, what would you think about, um... Hot fudge on top of shrimps. <laughs> Perfect. Let me just call in a new 10-7. Let me do it. 10-7-F. F. He's in friends. You jump. All those people down there will know that you killed yourself for a woman like that. She's unclean, a harlot. In darkness, they corrupt in darkness. They must die. She's down there right now. And she's waiting for you. Yeah. Just hoping that you'll jump. Then she can tell everybody why. Dirty, filthy harlot! Lying, vicious harlot! Dirt! You touched me. You've been with her. <laughs> 
Graham, have you touched me? Mr. Graham, do you remember me, Mr. Graham? Lieutenant Stone. We met in your office. My office? That's right, Mr. Graham. You are Lauren Graham, aren't you? I, uh... Well, now, you do remember me, Mr. Graham. Your secretary, Miss Winter, she asked me to help find you. She's a lovely woman. Everything a woman should be. Decent, honest, clean. Yes. Miss Winters. Good, good woman. Inspector Stone, is it? Lieutenant Stone, that's Inspector Keller. Well, how do you do, Inspector? Mr. Graham. Well, is there anything I can do for you, gentlemen? Well, I just thought that maybe you and I could have a little talk together. Oh, well, certainly. I'd be glad to. Good. here for just get me the paper I want the box score you can't get a paper in there inside you can since when since now yes sir it's a lovely day Job? Nobody, boy, you did. <laughs> Give me the box score. Jesus. All right, I'm going to do you one better. I'm going to get you a box seat at Candlestick Park tonight. Yeah, I'll you. believe it when I see it. <laughs> Francisco, a Quinn Martin production. Starring Carl Malden. Also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars Tim O'Connor, Cal Bellini, Brad David. Tonight's episode, Trail of the Serpent.
do it. Let's go. 2.42. Okay. Let's change. Just closing, guys. Barbarian has just been down to the night depository. Can't help you. George. Fifty old titus. Well, if I had it, uh, like I said, it's already in the bank. It's in the box. Yeah, it's in that um, tin box you got stashed under the counter somewhere. Will. Hey, look, guys, I can't keep giving you money. There's just not that kind of profit in a small market like this. Rich. From my Try side. to see nothing. Right to remain silent. You don't know what you can do with your right. This guy got down to Connors. Yeah, this is the punk. That's your word, man. Just your word. Your gun. People own the store. They saw the whole thing, Lieutenant. Right. It's 
Inspector Keller. This is Lieutenant Stone. George Barbario. Angelo. And that's the guy who killed your policeman. He was a leader. They called themselves the Cobras. I've heard about them, Mrs. Barbario. Barbario. Could we do this inside, please? Sure. He's okay, because I see him from roof later on. There must have been... There must have been 50 fuzzers. Wait a minute. Chick, you gotta know what they're gonna do to him, right? I mean, the buddy didn't dump me, so I don't dump him. I get away, that's all. You guys want a piece of it? Whoa! <laughs> You don't? <laughs> okay. Okay. What do you got working, chick? <laughs> A little job for your kid brother, Richie. I tried to help them at first. Maybe I was wrong. I give them groceries every now and then. Or a couple bucks. They took advantage. It just got out of hand. It happens, Mrs. Barbario. And I'm sorry about your store. Oh, the market we can put back together. But the dead policemen... Sorry. Descriptions of help, though. We'll get them for you. Would you excuse us, please? Please. Sure. Fred. I want to make a sweep through a four-square block area around this market. And we better do it quick before those kids disappear. Good enough, Lieutenant. It's a manpower. We still have eight, ten men on the scene. Good. That'll make uh, four two-man teams, huh? We'll divvy up the blocks and house the house. In. Steve, I think if we're going to shake doorknobs, it would be wise if we split up. Each of us take a uniform. Right. Huh? Right. You take Fred. I'll take Rojack. I'll hold him. Come on, Rojack. You got the short straw this time. There's an old pigeon coop on that roof, Mike. We tagged some juveniles up there a couple of months ago. All right, let's try it. I'll take the back. Jeff, take the front. Hi. Hi. How are you? You a policeman? Yeah, that's right. Somebody? Uh huh, that's right. Guys in black jackets, maybe? You see them? Black jackets with cobras on the back. Cobras? I don't know. They were running. Black jackets, yeah. How many? Where? Four. They went into a place way down there. 
You show me. Nobody lives there. There's a back door, but they still might be in there. I just saw them from our house. We live right down the street. Good. Good. Will you do me a favor? Sure. You know that building I was standing in front of? A policeman will be coming out of it soon. You tell him where I am. And then tell him to call in. Call in? That's right. Sure. Come on. Where's Rojack? Did you see the policeman? Did you give the piece to the kid? They're spreading. Hey, you've just been busted. <laughs> you can stay with us for a while. It ain't too much, but it's home for you for about as long as it takes. Yeah, we'll be rotating units all weekend. Between us and, and the Secret Service, those boys will be safe when they were in their cradles. All right, Stan. Later. Boy, these governor's conventions, uh, if... I don't know why they don't pick on Miami for a change. Yeah. You got anything? Mike? Yeah. No. What do you think? Wait just a second, Steve. I'm gonna get this little diddly. I really envy you guys out in the streets. I thought this promotion was gonna mean this much more paperwork. I'm telling you what it is. Roy's been an hour and a half since Mike and I split up. Now, You're I think... talking about maybe the most experienced guy in the department. I'm just talking about my partner, a guy I know better than anybody. A guy who would not wander around without checking in and leading a 10-7. Well, it's only been an hour and a half. You said so yourself. I want some men, Roy. Oh, Steve. A cop got gunned down right where we were tonight. And you got to report the right up. Roy, right. Okay, Roy, let's get the on The only it. report I'm working on is Mike's. Until then... Until then, you're not going to do your job, huh? Going to let your nerves take over when your head would be used at most. Look, Steve, baby, I know that a brother died tonight, and I know what it can do to every man on the force. But I can't let it panic us into actions that can set off a real powder cake. Wait a minute, I don't understand. I mean the kids that run in those gangs. They don't have all that much of a life to start with, you know. Right. Well, I'm not going to give them that kind of an incentive to build this thing into something bigger than it is by sending an army out onto their turf. Well, that's all fine, but Mike's still out there. Mike can handle himself. Yeah. Devin. All right, put him on. Hello? This is Lieutenant Devitt speaking. Can I help you? Get a tracer on this thing and climb on it yourself. Uh, how'd that go again? I said we got a cop. And you can forget about any tricks with the phone, because we ain't going to rap that long. Okay. Well, what are you talking about? Who's we? We is us. <laughs> You don't gotta know who we are, you just gotta know who we got. Let me get this straight. You're telling me that you got a police officer with you somewhere? Yeah, badge number 897. That ring any bells? Okay, all right, just get them going as soon as they find a the location. Now, come me back in a Devitt's line. I said anyone can call and give us a number out of the air like that. It doesn't prove much. 
Yeah, and I said forget about trying to check out this call, remember? You want to check out something, you check out where uh, Lieutenant Michael Stone is right now. Let me talk to him. Forget it. The only way you talk to him again is to let Buddy go. Buddy? Buddy Sims. You booked him tonight. Uh, he's the one who killed the police officer? Yeah, you don't let him go and uh, you can order up two funerals. Ah, uh, you get this and get it good. Threats like that cut nothing here. You got till 9 a.m. I'm telling you, department policy. And I'm telling you 9 o'clock. Buddy walks by then or... Uh, or this guy's head comes off. What do you mean, nothing? You got an area, section, anything? Okay, all right. Where the hell is this guy, buddy? General emergency. Light's better over here. I just thought we could trade spots. Better for his eyes. What are you reading? A fella can learn a lot from books. Place he's never been, things he's never seen. You read a lot? Have you ever read Robin Hood? <laughs> I think I read that when I was about your age. There's another one, uh, Three Musketeers. Both those books loaded with adventure. Have you read either one of them? You ought to. Ask your teachers about them. What grade you in? He doesn't go to school. He doesn't go to... Why not? I guess it doesn't matter to you. It certainly does. It matters to all of us. A kid like that, who likes books, doesn't get a chance to read them. I know how to read books. Of course you can. But what kind of books? Can you pick the right books? That's what school is for. It teaches you to pick the right books. I don't need school. You don't need school? Who told you? Did you tell him that? Hey, maybe you better shut up. You two are brothers, aren't you? Yeah, your brother's all right. David, come in. It on him very heavy. Uh, he gave them till nine tomorrow. What did they say? They said, forget it. <laughs> well, what they say, what they do are two different things. No way. There's going to be no trade for me tomorrow or for anybody, ever. Just doesn't work that way. Mm, that's cold. You better get ready to kiss it off, Jack. Who are they and where'd they take them? By me, baby. Look, buddy, there's no way you can climb out of this one. You mean all of a sudden I'm worth more than one of your own kind? Nobody wearing one of those jackets is worth anything, man, unless they turn them loose. Well, I'm sorry, man. What can I do about it? Like, I'm in here and they're out there, you know? You can tell us where they are. Keep them from making the same mistake you like did. the man says, man, it's a free world. Stop this, stop this. You know where he is and you're gonna talk. He, he killed Traconis. His friends are the same. They don't care. Wait, wait a minute, man. Who doesn't care? Like, you want me to tell you how much I care, baby? Come here, man. <laughs> You 
deals! That's right, punk. Still no deals. Can you give me those men now? Boy, if we ever had a, a prayer, a crack in that kid, you sure blew it. He thinks now we care so much that, that we're going to crack, you know All that. All I you? care about is Mike right now, what's facing him, and what he would do for me in the same spot. He used his head. All right, all right, he'd use his head. But you have got to give me those men. You got to let me comb those alleys, building by building, door by door. I don't have to let you do anything the way you wound up. There's going to be a sweep, then I'll lead it. What are you talking about, if? I got 50 governors arriving in this city tomorrow. Every one of them, and every available man is... You name me up. one man who wouldn't pull double duty for Mike. That's not the point. Then what is? Look, look, Steve, forgetting that we all know this can happen to any one of us walking in, and forgetting we're more than a family. We got a whole city to look after. Roy, I'm asking for one section, ten lousy blocks. That's all, Roy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you got it. You can pull Lessing and Harris, Kincaid and Carpenter to start with. I'll call Juvenile and see if they got anything for us. I got a juggle that security set up on a convention with CPU. Here are some more men. You give me a 10 20 every 15 minutes. You... Where'd he go? Yeah. This is Devitt here. Hmm. Stopped. What time you got? I don't. Must be about 2, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it must be. Where's, uh... Davy? Is that what you call him? Say, could you spare another cup of that? Bright kid, Davy, you know. <laughs> the way he suckered me into this little setup. If he hadn't done it just right, he never would have had me. You know, you're wrong in telling him that he doesn't have to go to school. How old is he, 14 or 15? Pretty important years in a kid's life. Hey, you know something? What? You talk too much. Why do you do this for a guy who murdered somebody? Look. We don't sit together, what have we got? What's Davey gonna have if you keep telling him that this is the way? Hey, uh, we gotta talk. Man, they have got black and whites all over the place. I figure we better move this guy till buddy gets out, you know? This might not be the best spot. Is this the guy? Yeah. War's over, fellas. They're putting on a dragnet, and a decision has to be made. Who usually made them for you, buddy? Shut up! Wasn't thinking too good, was he? Getting you into all this, pretty messy. Watch him, Jerry. Uh, me and Rich is gonna scout at another place. Skulls, warlords. Nothing there. Nothing. How goes it? What do you got, Stan? Gotta be a new club. None of the guys in Juvie ever heard of them. 
Invaders I got. Grim Reapers, no mads, no cobras. We're just going back to the packet on his buddy Sims, finding out who he was busted with and who he ran with. Where's Lucas, huh? Home. His wife has a hundred and three fever. Well, Lucas is the man, isn't he? He's the guy that's into the whole thing with the gangs, right? Well, so is Stan. We're into it. I mean, okay. Two guys were. Sims was called up three months ago, suspicion of GT Auto with a chick Kramer. And we had a warrant on Sims, Kramer, and a Richard Sung for suspicion ADW. Sung. That checks out with the Bible. Yeah, let's run that one, Stan. Rings a bell. Sung, Richard Sung. The Choppers. Sung, Kramer, Willard, Lou. The Choppers. Cobras must be a spin off the same gang. What about a phone drop, headquarters, anything we can make a move of? Right, right here. Right here. Pool hall. We're on clay. What about a name? Davis. Ed Davis. Good, Stan. I appreciate it. Okay, see ya. Getting the coffee that Richie poured. And that coffee has got to be. Oh, Stan. shoot pool here, that's their business. Juvenile Records just told us that this is the home for the whole club. I wouldn't know. You know names? I know names, faces. Faces, huh? Good, let's go. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where are we going? Downtown. What for? We're looking at some faces. Well, who's going to open up here? How long is this going to take? It's not our business. Come on, let's go. Okay, okay. Just wait a minute. Okay, uh, I know some names, maybe. A few. Uh, first names, that is. Billy, Buddy, how's your head? You cracked it on the floor when you went down. Bullet took a chunk out of your side. You lost some blood, but I plugged it with a towel. Don't worry. You won't die from it. We won't let you. Word's out. His jackets are underground. Yeah. Just go up here a little further, and then we'll go into the alleys on foot. You know, that guy could have told us more. He gave us over there. Should have leaned on him. Yeah, that's not your style. 
I worked for 13 years, shoulder to shoulder with the same guy. I think I know what you're going through. You can't change your M.O., Steve. You're liable to get caught looking the wrong way yourself. Yeah. How do you think they got him? Well, he's gonna have to tell us that himself when we find him. Inspectors 8-1, code 1025, 411 Fremont. Officers report possible location of kidnap involving Lieutenant Mike Stone. Will you respond? 81, 10-4, we'll respond. Fremont, huh? That gang hounds out in the pool yeah, hall. They just might be smart enough to stay as far away from this possible. Get it, baby. False alarm. What do you mean, false alarm? Yeah, uh, we scared these two up down the block. They ran. We thought we had something. Turned out to be six sticks of grass. What are you doing this far off the sweep? We just got word they'd be holed up down here someplace. Word was wrong. It came from a very good source, Inspector. The name's Johnny Dolan. Dolan? That little guy has that newspaper stand down in Gary? Yeah, a distributor now. On the streets with a truck early every day. He says he saw Mike? Yeah, with three Cobras. That possible Cobras get down here? No way, man. Why not? Cobras never drift past 22nd. What time this guy, uh, Dolan, say he saw Mike? Uh, it was about uh, 4.30, wasn't it, Ben? Maybe a quarter of five. Okay. Oh, please. How are you guys? Let's go. Move. I don't know. I don't buy it. You got a hostage, you don't walk him around the streets. You can't even hold up. I'll bet he's not more than 10 blocks away from where he started. That's all these back alleys and the way these buildings are stacked up. We could look in there all day and never find him. We got less than two hours. Take these two downtown, then get your tails back in the sweep. Yes, sir. Hey, where can we find this guy, Dolan? Oh, he's probably still out making drops. He was heading north toward Telegraph Hill when he stopped us. Oh, he's driving an old pickup. Johnny Dolan? Yeah. I'm Lieutenant Devitt with Homicide. Yeah, sure. Used to be robbery, I remember. How's it going, Lieutenant? You gave some information to one of our radio units about an hour ago? Yeah, I thought maybe it was something you should know about. A big guy I seen around, uh, I think his name is Stone. He was being hustled off by some of those gang kids. It didn't look right to me, you what know? What kind of jackets they wearing? Huh? The gang, what kind of jackets were they wearing? Um, oh, uh, those club jackets, you know. What club, Johnny? Well, uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, I just seen him walking down the street. And you saw their faces? Uh, no. You mean you came up from behind them, then? Is that it? Yeah, that's right. And you saw the back of their jackets? Well, yeah. Well, what was on them? What design? What picture? Well, I don't know. I didn't notice. But you noticed they're wearing jackets? Yeah. Why? What was so special about the jackets? Look, I give you guys a lot of inside stuff now. Well, what are you giving us now, Johnny? Well, what do you mean? I'm giving it to you straight. No, you're not. Straight's a gang called the Cobras. They like to be seen. They wear a snake on their back in bright orange. You couldn't have missed it. Why, Johnny? By what? By the lie. Now look, guys. We have looked. And we know you're having trouble on your corners. Trouble with gangs. You know their trouble everywhere. You know that. We know you filed charges against the Cobras. Two guys in particular. Chick Kramer and a buddy Sims. Robbery and assault. Then you dropped the charges. Why? I figured it was best. Look, they just got out of line once. Nothing's happened since. How much you pay them to make sure? Nothing. I'd come off it. Names, Johnny. Names. 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 Oh, all right. One of them was Kramer. The other ones I don't know. Kid with dark hair and a, another Chinese stocky, not too tall. 
Where? Where was this? They stopped me up on Connecticut. They told me to call in, told me if I didn't... Connecticut and what? 18th, right on the corner. That's two blocks from where Mike's been with Rojack. A block from the pool hall. That could be the phone drop. Hey, hey you guys, you gotta protect me! Hey, fellas, you... Uh, uh, He didn't do it. Chick? Here. How about you? I'm okay. What do you say we split it 50-50? Okay. Thanks. Hey, say. That's a pretty fancy ring. Dragon, huh? Symbol for the towel. You know the town? I know about it. The way, right? David. It's the mystery of life. And the dragon represents it. Something that man thought up to stand for an idea he... well, he couldn't explain or he couldn't see. How do you know all that? Oh, books. Books, really. I told you. You can learn an awful lot from good books. Where did you get that? From my brother. And my father. Family ring? I thought the oldest son always kept it. You read that in a book, too? Uh, no, no. <laughs> a friend told me. Good friend. You two weren't born here, were you? Hong Kong. You've been here how long? A couple of three years? Five. Five years. And your father, he come here with you too? Yeah. And died here. In the land of opportunity. I'm going to get some information out of that dude. Inspectors 8-1, we have your caller on the line. Inspectors 8-1. 8-1, 10-4, keep him coming. Is that the only phone you got in here? Yeah, that's it. It's got to be here. Yeah. I'll work up the hill. What about Davy? Huh? What's going to happen to him when this is all over? They're going to put him in a foster home? Or he's going to live in a dump like this and scrounge a living out of garbage cans? He stays with me, same as always. Sure. You're going to be dead and so am I. Maybe you'll be in Quentin with a life, Joel. That's a fact, Richard. 
<laughs> you can look a fact in the eye and not even recognize it. What's the matter with you, Richard? You a slow learner? Facts. That's what you've been laying on me? That's right, facts. Fact. You helped kill a cop. Fact. You're gonna serve time for it. That's right. That is right. Even if you gave me that gun right now, you're gonna serve time. So, what have I got to lose? David, you bonehead. With you and the slammer, who's gonna keep his nose clean? Davy will have had it. Fact, you've had it. The minute Buddy pulled that trigger on Sirconis, you had it. Your brother still has a chance. Small chance, but a chance. You see, I could make sure that he got in with a good family. Took care of him. Made sure that he got to school regularly. Bought him books. Talked to him. Took him out to ball games. And made sure he got a kick in the slats if he hooked up with a guy like Buddy. It's a small chance, Richard. What's the handle? What do you want? Well, first... I don't expect you to help me. Just don't stop me. Don't stop me. I... I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna go to that door. And I'm gonna walk out. I wouldn't. I have to. I have to, Richard. And just... I don't know, eight, seven minutes. That psycho that you're letting call the shots, he's gonna walk in here and blow my head off. And I'm not gonna sit here and wait for that to happen. Why don't you give us a break, Richard, Davy and me? He's wearing that ring because you and your father believed in him. You felt he was the one that had a chance, didn't you? He was the one in the family that was gonna make it. Well, don't you be the one that blows it for him, Richard. Okay, here it goes. Is that it? Yeah. Chick's not the one who's gonna do it, you know. It's gonna have to be you who's gonna pull that trigger. You're the one that's gonna have to live with it. It's time. Let's do it. Listen, man, uh... I'll meet you, okay? I'll just be a second. You drunk! You were just as big on grabbing that guy as I was. Your move, Richard.
is he going to let you? I don't know. I just don't know. Thank God. What little I know about Oriental heritage, I learned from the Chinese scout on Iwa. Once he said, the trail of the serpent leads to death. bought that bullet a long time ago. There was no way to buy it back. Listen, uh, Ben showed me a report you finished. The biography of Dumas? How'd you happen to pick him? Oh, I heard of him. He wrote the Three Musketeers. Yeah. I heard of him. Hey, you're doing all right, Davy. I'm glad. I'll see you soon, huh? Sure. Yeah. I don't know if he's going to go for it or not. Time, that's all. Just take time and a lot of what that family's given him. I hope you're right. Oh, he's a bright kid. Listen, maybe he won't grow up to be a cop, but at least he'll know why we're around. <laughs> Francisco, a Quinn Martin production, starring Carl Malden, also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars John Saxon, Belinda J. Montgomery, Harry Rhodes, special guest star Joseph Cotton. Tonight's episode, a collection of eagles.
There we are, 40 units. It's him? Maybe. I'll go, Fiennes. Vince? Ernie. Annie, good to hear your voice. Listen, did you get them? Yeah, the whole lot. Beautiful. Uh, where are you? I'm uh, just off the Embarcadero, 207 Front Street, room 25. Oh, there's a rear entrance. Uh, did you have any trouble? <laughs> Not a hitch. I smell like a ship's bilge, and I gotta wash off half of Mexico. Well, look, uh, uh, there's no rush. Uh, take a good long bath and get a good night's sleep. You've earned it, and uh, we'll see each other tomorrow. Sure. Uh, maybe it's better anyway, yeah? Uh, I'm beat. See you tomorrow, then. Yeah. He's got them, Tommy. Enough to buy us the world. Tommy, where are you going? You're insulin. This is no time to be falling on your face. Since I don't know whether I can do it. You'll do it, Tommy. Just like we planned. You'll do it for the money and for me. Ashes to ashes. Yeah. What do you think, Doc? Another cigarette in bed? It's hard to say yet. He was pretty well done. Well, I'll get the arson detail in here and see what they can turn up. How long for the autopsy report? I'll get on it right away. Hi, you, Doc. Steve. Mike, we got a John Doe. Manager said the night clerk didn't register anybody for this room. A fin or a saw buck under the table. That's one way to beat the room tax. Yeah. Did you get the uh, clerk's name and address? Radio unit's on his way to pick him up. Uh, well, maybe we got something. <laughs> Looks pretty black. The numbers look good. Go on, put your young eyes on that. Nothing. Nothing, eh? Yeah. Now, poke around on there some more. 
Thanks. You know, a guy with a gun who doesn't register in a flea bag like this, you know something's fishy. Mike. Yeah. Take a look at this. Looks like one of those, uh, gold luck charms or something. Gold? Maybe. Luck charm? I don't think so. of some interest after all. Mr. James, you startled me. <laughs> In this contraption, I sometimes feel like a mechanical satyr. Body of a man and legs of a champion. What is it? What? You're troubled. No, I'm just tired, I guess. I worked late last night typing up the notes. The university should have warned you I'm a slave driver. Well, the last person to leave the project did say something to that effect. Oh, that was a big mistake all around. A man can't dictate an autobiography to an insensitive soul. Uh, what about you? Any complaints? Oh, no. The room he gave me is just lovely. The pay is fine, and the company is very stimulating. Oh, thank you. Tell me the truth. Now, when I came in a moment ago, you were thinking, I'm an eccentric old man who hoards his gold coins like a modern-day Midas, weren't you? No, not really. I was just thinking they must be very valuable. Well, in round figures, half a million dollars. I had no idea. Would you like to hear how I came to collect them? Uh... No, I think we should uh, finish what we left off with yesterday. Um, what do you remember about your 1927 trip to New Zealand? You are a very odd young woman. The first one I ever met who was more interested in my memory than my money. Well, people already know about the John R. James fortune, and I want the book to be about the man. Thank you. Let's go on the terrace. Joy? All right. Say. Nothing yet. Is that thing worth anything, Charlie? Mm -hmm. Specific gravity gold, slightly less than 22 carats. 900,000 is fine. Weight, exactly 516 grains. All of which means? All of which means it's a planchette. A what? A planchette. It's a metal disc that's ready to be stamped into a coin, right? Right. I use it in crossword puzzles a lot. You got time to do crossword puzzles? I don't give you enough to do around here, huh? Say, um, what kind of a coin does this thing make? Well, I got some books over here to tell you for sure. That one to me looks like a double eagle size. Double eagle, that's a $20 gold piece, isn't it? Hey, chalk one up for the old folks. You like words, huh? Yeah. Read them to me. See you, Charlie. Well, there's 464 grains of pure gold in the planchette. And how many grains in an ounce? Uh, 450, isn't it? No, I think it's 480. Ah, oh, 450. 480. 480? Yeah. Well, they must have changed it since my high school physics course. <laughs> they must have. <laughs> Look, um, no, let's not read for a minute, huh? Now, the night clerk said that the victim came in with a satchel. Right. We don't find a satchel. 
But we do get this uh, little goodie here. Which ye old book here says is illegal in the U.S. except as coins held by collectors. And which could have been in that closet for years where they clean out those waterfront dives. Possible, yeah. Think we're spinning our wheels? Close to an ounce of gold. Worth about, oh, about 65 or 70 bucks on the international market. I think it's about that. Stone. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be right there. Looks like maybe we got something. What? Coroner said murder. Tommy. May I help you? Is Vince here? He's busy right now. Is there anything I can do to help? Karen. Hi. You're early. I missed you. Come, let's take a walk. Who was that? Just a guy I brought in to help out a little. He doesn't know anything about what's going on, no, does he? Oh, he barely knows enough about coin stands and the questions that come in off the street. Did you bring the diagram? Yes. Are you sure you have each coin in the exact place he keeps it? Yes. Vince, I'm frightened. Of what? I don't know. Doing anything like this. Getting caught or... Hurting that old man. We're just going to trade one set of coins for another set of coins, and nobody's going to get hurt. Do you want to see something? What is it? Our ticket to Spain, Angel, the Costa del Sol. you do about it. It's how we feel about each other that counts. And having the money to do whatever we want to do together and go wherever we want to go. You really do mean it, don't you? What you said. Maybe. And the last thing in the world I wanted to do the day I found you was to make a delivery to that mausoleum. Bang, there you were. You're the best trip I've ever had. And Mr. James, Will you should... you stop worrying about that old man? He owns half of Knob Hill. And he's not going to miss what's in that case. He told me this morning it was worth about half a million dollars. Angel, you've seen it sitting there yourself. Now, what good is it doing anybody? It's not like robbing a bank or someone's business. Hey, I've watched people like that all my life. I watched while my father pandered to them. I swept up a crummy shop while they walked out with more than he made all year sealed in one lousy little bit of plastic. What do they do with it? Take it home and put it in a glass case. Well, fine. Let John R. James sit and stare at his eagles. I want to see the world. Homicide, no question. There wasn't a trace of smoke in the victim's lungs. Well, that means the victim was dead before the fire started, eh? Yeah. Couldn't be a stroke or a heart attack. Not from my findings. Considering there were no breaks, welts, or contusions on the body, I'd make it suffocation. Suffocation, huh? This envelope shows there was a struggle. Bits of human flesh and hair from under the victim's fingernails. Let's get it under the microscope. There's uh, no chance of making an ID on the victim, huh? Sorry. Later, okay? Thanks, yeah. Harry. Buddy boy. What does a short barrel 32 with the serial numbers filed off say to you? Pro, ice starters, maybe. 
and one planchette out of a satchel full, ripped off by whoever killed him? Well, a couple hundred be worth ten, maybe fifteen thousand, but you'd have to have the right contacts to unload them. Wouldn't be worth all that time and trouble, though, would it? No. What about the night clerk? Oh, no, nickels and dimes. This one's got to be worth more than nickels and dimes. Tommy, here's $15,000, if it were good, but it's not. I blew that one. You see those scratches? Those little things? Those little things are called cast marks. When they're that bad, you could tell an expert that it's a phony real fast. Speaking of scratches, how about those that Ernie laid on you? They're OK. I guess they found me by now. Relax. I'll never be able to tell what they found. That's a strand of blonde human hair. It came from the same place the coroner found those flecks of skin on slide number two. Is it body hair or face? Body, and probably his arms. And he's between the age of 20 and 40, definitely male and Caucasian. Well, that lets you and me out, Charlie. How about you, buddy boy? You willing to roll up your sleeves? Want to try to raise a few numbers? Chicken, huh? <laughs> Charlie. Mm -hmm. What do you got on this third slide? Shards of rusted metal. I found them embedded in the soles of the victim's shoes. Any guesses? Well, I have a better picture when I finish evaporating the solution. We wash what was left of the victim's clothing and shoes. That's what we got. A rust powder in solution. Electromagnet. You want to know something? What? I've been here for 25 years. I've never seen this thing work. A well, serial number stamped in metal can be filed off. It can never be completely destroyed. Yeah, I know that. The molecular structure of the metal retains a ghost of the stamp number. Let's see it work. Right. Serial number H12987. All PG's urgent. I'm on my way. What do you know? It really works, huh? Mm -hmm. Now you see it. Now you don't. Magic, eh? Well, maybe we'll get something after all. Say, where's that, um, oh, the latent print kit? Oh. <laughs> You're gonna need a ten-point match for positive ID. You really think there's a chance? Charlie, I'm gonna let you in a little secret. I always think there's a chance. get tired. How much longer? A few more tonight, a few more in the morning. Vince, who are you calling? Karen. Vince? I told you it was just business. I killed a man, Vince. Now, look, that had to be done. Just like my seeing Karen. Now, it won't be long now. Go inside and get some more glassing cases and we'll seal these up. Go ahead. finished in the morning. Tomorrow? I'll tell you what time. Well, I gotta go now. Love you, baby. I love you, too. I...
Well, 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 what? Sodium chloride, sodium bromide, magnesium bromide. Well, thank you, Dr. Einstein. Well, the primary salt's in seawater. From the victim's clothes. The residue evaporated from the solution we got when we washed them. Well, this came from the shoes. It's a lead compound identical to what they use in marine paint. A ship. Just off it, too, if he hadn't changed his clothes. Everybody wants to be a detective. San Diego made the serial numbers in the 32. Stolen three weeks ago in National City. Prince taken to the scene of theft, identified as an Ernie Walker, a.k.a. Ernie Willard. Priors all for robbery, huh? I'm on Walker's jacket. I want his mug shots, I want his prints, I want everything I want him right now. I've already asked for it. It's on its way. Good. Well, we may have our dead man, now we gotta find the man who killed him. They're pretty, aren't they? You see that one on the bottom? The fourth from the right? Yeah. What's the date? 1907. Uh-huh. Does that look any different from the rest? They all look the same to me. Well, that one's worth $22,500, Tommy. Real rare piece of change. We're gonna be rich, huh, Vince? Yeah. Vince? Insulin. How many units was that? Um, how many units? About 80, I think. Maybe a little more. No, it's supposed to be 40. Right. Vince? That's too much. Vince? Sorry, Tommy. Just business. Most beautiful in the morning, coming awake, alive. Oh, oh don't do that. It's taken nearly ten years to perfect this hybrid. Sorry. It's all right. You couldn't have known. I believe if I cross this with that dark red over there, I'll have the most beautiful rose ever created. A deep, deep red with just a tinge of yellow in the throat. The look of velvet. A true queen. Like... No other on earth ever before her. <laughs> I, I must sound like a jelly-minded old fool. <laughs> no, no, not at all. They mean even more to you than the eagles, don't they? The eagles belong to someone else now. These will always be mine. What do you mean? Nothing. I always eat too much. Yeah. Yo, yeah, how much do I owe you? Forget it. What do you mean, forget it? Somebody give you a raise in salary that I didn't offer? You forget authorize? it. You don't owe me anything. OK, thanks, big shot. <laughs> you like talking, or you still think? Oh, I'm sorry, buddy boy. You know that partial that we lifted from the 32? That proves that this walker is the guy that we pried from that hotel room, right? Right. 
He did two years in Nevada for grand theft. Completed his parole right here in this city. His last address was San Diego. Right. Well, is that all supposed to add up to something? Just that he's a thief who lived here. The last time he was known to be alive was in San Diego, which is as close to Mexico as you can get. Mexico? Mm-hmm. And that's a big, big gold producer, right? Skipped across the border, picked up a satchel full of these, surfaced here. And he was on a ship. We didn't buy a ticket. Stowed away on a freighter. A bribe, a nice, cozy berth in steerage. <laughs> you know, it's true. What is? What you always say. You work long enough as a cop, you start thinking like a crook. Then you must know what else I'm thinking, huh, buddy boy? A counterfeit operation. That's right. But if you're dealing in counterfeit coins, especially gold coins, it's a very special market. A collector's market. Right, and those guys can tell a phony. Or buy from a dealer who can. Yeah. We're gonna need an expert. I'll tell you what, I'll call a numismatic society and get us one. You what? The numismatic society. Numis... I know. I know. Coin collectors. Very good. I worked a few crossword puzzles myself, you know, buddy boy. <laughs> Unit 8-1. Unit 8-1. 902 to crime lab. Unit 8-1. 10-4. What have you got? Mm, I thought you might want to look at these. Who is it? Harris and I are working on it now. Body washed up by Hunter's Point this morning. Probably in a bay all night. Johnson saw the pictures, thought of my tie. Blonde. Oh, age is what, between 20 and 30? This our killer? I've got a workup in progress now. You got any ID? Negative. Even the labels were stripped from the clothing. What killed him? The coroner says an insulin OD. Did you get a set of prints? In the works. Let me know when you get a make. Right. Thanks, Charlie. Hey, uh, maybe you're in the wrong department after all. Listen to me. I know how you feel, but there's nothing to worry about. Nothing can go wrong, and no one will be hurt if you do as I told you. Vince, please, do you have to do it? Yes, we have to do it. You and I together, and then we can be together always, in style, the way we planned. Look, I don't care about the money, all right? All I want is... Well, I do care about the money, Karen. I care very much. I care enough to have this whole thing set up right now, and I'm counting on you. You have that case open. I'll be there at nine. Yes. Yes, yes, this is a copians. Well, I suppose so, but can I ask what this is about? Okay, um, okay, I'll be there shortly. And the basic design was changed twice after 1849. These changes were made oh, in 1866 and 1907. Between 1907 right. and 1933, 57 issues were minted. Terrific. Wonderful. Only 206 possibilities. 206, huh? You know, if I was going to counterfeit coins, I'd go for the rarest issues. Now, here's one. 1907. Check that out. $22,000? $22,500, uh, and that was 11 years ago. For one coin, i got to get mm -hmm. into this. It's That's another so world. <laughs> yeah. Yes, come in. Lieutenant Stone? Yeah, what can we do for you? Well, I believe it's the other way around. You telephoned me for some kind of assistance. I'm Vincent Hagopi. Oh, excuse me. I called you. I'm Inspector Keller. How do you do? This is Lieutenant Stone. Lieutenant. Yes, how do you do? Well, hope I haven't kept you waiting too long. Not at all. We appreciate your coming. Why don't you sit down? 
You want some coffee? Uh, no, thank you. Ah. I was told your shop deals with a lot of collectors of a double eagle. Well, yes, we dealt quite a lot with them in the past, but not so much anymore. They've got too expensive. Yeah, yeah we were just looking at some of these prices. Incredible. <laughs> so one coin here, 22,500. May I see it? Sure. Oh, yes, San Godens type. It's extra high relief. It's sold for 22,500 in Chicago, 1963, I believe. But I take it you gentlemen have some special interest in eagles. Well, we have reason to believe that we're looking for a counterfeiter. Counterfeit eagles? Well, that sounds like a very complicated operation for a very limited market. I mean, I don't see how anyone could expect to pass them through a dealer without being discovered. Well, that's why we wanted to talk to you. You see, we'd uh, like to have a list of names of all the collectors in the city. Yes, sir. It'll take a little while. Well, we think the counterfeiter has about 100 of those planchettes, and he's had them for about uh, 36 hours. Now, would it be possible for him to have stamped all the coins by now? Yes, I suppose so, provided he had the uh, die and the press already available. Well, that could mean he's ready to make his move. Uh, excuse me, Lieutenant? Uh, what exactly did you mean by his move? Well, you just said that it would be almost impossible to pass them through a dealer without being discovered. Yes. But how many collectors stop to look for minor imperfections once they've owned that rare coin for several years? I see. You mean a switch. Transferring the, uh, the counterfeit coins for the authenticated ones and then selling those somewhere else where there's no risk of detection. Sounds possible to me. How about you? <laughs> Sounds ingenious. And terribly important for someone in my field to help you to stop. Uh, but, Lieutenant, you'd want more than the uh, names of collectors. You'd want a list of all the issues that would be uh, most likely passed. You see, they'd have to be either proof or uncirculated to command any kind of price. Well, what about this uh, 1907 coin, for example? Oh, no, I'd rule that out. That's too rare. Well, can you give us issues that you can't rule out? Yes. Be quite a lot. And about the uh, collectors, I'd have to check my records in my shop to compile that list. Well, we'd appreciate anything you gave us, Mr. Hagopian. Would be my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Good day. Good day. Good day. Take us two days just to put the right coins with the collectors that Gobian gave us. Yeah, he helped a lot. Yeah. Hmm. What do you know? What? Remember that coin that Hagopian said was too rare? The one that went for 22 G's? Yep. Take a look who bought it. John R. James, San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And if he owns that one, he owns others. Well, I remember his name on that list. Because it's not on there. Well, how could he forget a name like that? You know, I think that's worth asking Mr. Hagopian himself. a duty as I have burdened you with over the months, it seems. Go ahead. You said this morning that um, these don't belong to you anymore. Have you agreed to sell them to someone? What I said this morning is not for publication. What I'm going to tell you now is. This coin was minted in 1907. It's the most expensive double eagle ever on the market. I paid an exorbitant price, I know, but it had a sentimental value. You see, my Uncle Henry actually started this collection for me with an identical coin on my seventh birthday. You began collecting these when you were seven years old? <laughs> no, no, not exactly. I sold it to buy a train ticket. This was my start, you might say, and when I made it in the world, I determined to buy it back again someday. Well, why the rest? I became enamored of these in my search for this. For instance... Mr. James, I'd much rather think of you with the roses. 
And with all of these. <laughs> Lock it out. This may become a mellow evening after all. <laughs> All set? Yes. Let's break out the brandy. Whether or not we ever finish that book I brought you here to write. I've enjoyed your company, Karen. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you for being more than just somebody an old man can babble on to about his yesterdays. And for being someone who understands just why and how he spent them the way he did. I think you probably understand everything about me except my eagles, even after hearing how I came to collect them. Well, it isn't important that I understand that. Well, it isn't important I keep the future from you either, provided it remains off the record. Of course. I've said they already belong to someone else. That's true. A trust owns them all, has for several years. When I die, they'll be sold at auction. The proceeds will go to the English department at the university. That's how we met, actually. Dean Robertson told me I wouldn't be disappointed in you in any respect. That's proved to be true, too. I'm glad you feel that way. Remember this morning, when I told you the roses were different? They had always belonged to me. Yes. Well, that was some sort of a fantasy, I suppose, an old man's idea of immortality. I could see my creation, my queen rose, carrying on my name long after I was gone. They deserve something much better. They deserve to be named after a beautiful woman. I'd like very much to name that rose after you, with your permission. What do you say? Shall it be Queen Karen? Sorry to be intruding, but we'd like to speak to Mr. James, please. Mr. James, isn't to be disturbed. Isabel, what is it? Lieutenant Stone, Inspector Keller. We're with Homicide. We'd like to talk to you about your collection of double eagles. I failed to make any connection between my eagles and Homicide. Well, if you gave us a few moments, I'm sure we could make that connection for you. Very well. Way, gentlemen. There they are. Now that's all of them, right? Yes, Inspector, that is all of them. Forty to be exact, with an average value of over twelve thousand dollars. Mr. James, did you know a dealer in this city by the name of Vincent Hagopian? Very well. I used to deal with him exclusively before he died. Died? About a year and a half ago. Well, we just talked to him this afternoon. His son had to be his son. Would be. He took over the business, but he's not the expert his father was. He hasn't the same love for it. He didn't mention that either. 
Maybe we ought to find out what else he forgot to mention. Say, may I use your phone? Certainly. Thank you. You still haven't explained why you're here. We're looking for counterfeits, Mr. James. <laughs> Counterfeit eagles here? Impossible. Who has access to your case? There's only one key. I keep it with me at all times. May I? Stone. Let me talk to Lessing. Lessing Stone. I want to make on Vincent Hagopian, Jr. He owns a coin shop on Maiden Lane. His name and address is on my desk. Go over there and pick Jimmy it up. Loves I'll hold. Desk left drawer. You got it? We'll go over to r &I and find out if by any chance there's a tie between this Hagopian and our other body, Ernie Walker. Body? What's he talking about? Well, we've had two killings we believe are connected with this counterfeiting. Did you get a make on that insulin OD yet? All right. Check Agopian's neighborhood and find out if the two of them were ever seen together. Anywhere. Now, you know where to look. The bars, his coin shop, apartment. Let me know what turns up. When was the last time you opened this, sir? Less than a half an hour ago. And were you alone? No, I was with a friend, a young lady. She's my house guest. May we speak to her, please? Certainly. Thank you. Got anything? I don't know. Mr. James. This coin. It's an 83 proof. Uh, only uh, 40 in the world. Could you look at it through the glass? We've taken sort of a two-day crash course because of this case, but those uh, hairline scratches, I believe you experts call them cast marks. They wouldn't be on a coin in proof condition, would they? No. They weren't here when I bought this coin. You didn't buy that coin, Mr. James. Somebody just gave it to you. A gopian? I don't know. Yes, sir. Will you ask Miss Pearson to join us, please? Well, Miss Pearson just left, sir. I heard her car on the driveway. Say, this girl, does she know Hagopian? Not well. But she did know him. Yes, as a matter of fact, I introduced them myself several months ago when he came here one day to make a delivery. Have they seen each other since then? I wouldn't know. <laughs> Certainly she couldn't be involved in anything like this. She's a very simple young woman. And if I read this Hagopian right, he's no simple young man. We'll need a description of Miss Pearson, sir. What's her first name? Karen. Here. I told you to wait for me. The police came. The police? Yeah, we were wrong. Look, we've got to take it back. Never mind, never mind. What did they want? What did they say? I don't know. I left as soon as they came. Help me. Let me get these mails. Then stop. Look, we have to take it back, all of it. It doesn't belong to him anymore. I know it doesn't belong to him. It belongs to me, and they'll be waiting for me in Spain. Oh, please. Look, I'll make it up. We don't need this. I'll tell you what I don't need. I don't need you. Your whining mouth or you're pawing me anymore.
How long do you think she'll get? Who? Who? Karen. Well, I'm a DA. She turned evidence. Identified Tom from the Gopian shop. That'll help her a little. What's this? Got your names on them. In appreciation, John R. James. Silver dollar. Where's that book? Where's the book? Yeah. What year is that? 1882. Looks pretty shiny, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Think they're uncirculated? Oh, I'd say they're uncirculated. Hey, we're rich. Yeah? Yeah. Four dollars a piece. <laughs> <laughs> Francisco, a Quinn Martin production, starring Carl Malden, also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars Roscoe Lee Brown, Brenda Sykes, Carol Lawson, Alan Emerson. episode, A Trout in the Milk. Last night, I dreamed a city. I blew apart the dew of my mind, and there, floating on the mist with bridges hung from stars, was my city. It was a lovely place on which to lay my sleepy head. A city to remember long years after I'm dead. But memory, you say, must die with death. It exits in concert with our last breath. So how dream up a city from the fragility of nine scheming futility without the ability to cry at the dying of my night or to mourn at the morn of my day? Rejoice! <laughs> there is a pulse to the dream. It lives. I give it to you. here, so what's so important? You're with Rob Evanauer again. Oh, come on, Yale. Famous poet like you must have more urgent things on his agenda. Janae, I'm not trying to tell you what to do with your life. Then don't. Nobody has me on an exclusive, least of all you. If 
Rob Evanauer meets my price. You want me to believe you're just modeling for him? I quote you, a model, model, models. Baby, Evanauer is the end of the line. You have lived your life. Now let me live mine. Not with Rob Evanauer. <laughs> Something funny? The two of you. I tell him I'm coming here and he skies. I tell you I'm going back and you go into an all-time downer. So why stay in the middle? Because it beats being out in the cold. Ciao, Daddy. Would you mind, Mr. Dancy? What's your name? Melissa. Melissa, from the Greek, it means honeybee. Did you know that, Melissa? No, Mr. Dancy. Go to Greece. I loved it, you will too. Give my regards to Aristotle. He knew that poetry is of graver import than history. Thank you. My pleasure. Nobody tells me who I use. Because she's good, that's why. Try it. Just go on and try it. You're crazy if you think you can. <laughs> Out here fast. Wings of mercury. Yeah, that stuff can poison you. Is he dead? Not yet. What have you got, Bryles? Well, his name is Rob Evanhauer, painter. 28, single. An eyewitness said it looked like someone loaded him into a 45 and pulled the trigger the way he came out of that window. What do you got, Mike? Hearing, I guess. See if you can spot the rest of this, huh? Right. I want this whole place brushed. I don't care if there are a hundred prints, I want them all. Mike. Take a look at this. The same. Yep. I want copies of this. Come here. What do you think of that? That's assault with intent. Or oh, murder number two, if Evanhauer doesn't make it. Sekulovich, come here. Now, this is uh, probably the victims, the blood and the hair, but nurse it along for latents, will you? So where do you want to start? Earrings. Yeah. Maybe Omar will play with us. Could be. Good luck, fellas. License, Lieutenant. I know you do, Omar. Now tell me, listen carefully. Anybody else make earrings like that? Well, if they did, I'd make something else. You're doing very nice work, Omar. This one's my favorite. You have good taste. Who's wearing it? Them. The earrings come in pairs. Oh, come on, Omar, come on. But they're cash customers, man. They don't give me their name. I want this one, Omar. Come on now, boy. Very pretty girl. I've never seen her. She's wearing your earring. She has taste, too. Who bought it and when? A 
Lieutenant, I do a volume business, man. It's a small unit profit, but a tremendous overturn. Well, in the last quarter alone, I must have dealt with 16 or 17 clients. Look, I, I've honestly, I haven't seen her. Sit down, will you, Omar? You're flirting with a nosebleed. They're not gonna go along with us. One might. Who's that? Seven, you. If Evan Howard dies, it'll be the greatest contribution to art since the invention of the frame. Savinu, you're an impressionist. Oh, you like that, huh? All he can afford are mug shots. <laughs> How about this? Evan Howard garbage. No, the model. Jenea. Last name. Oh, come on, Lieutenant. Think back. When did you ever bother to ask them their last names? Did she ever model for you? Just on that one. But not now, man. Now it's top dollar. From Evan Howard? A little hanky-panky there, maybe. You know, you could save us a lot of time making the grand tour of the model agencies. <laughs> OK, fellas. Just that I hate fingering someone who benched Mr. Rob Evanhauer. Paint yourself some crocodile tears. <laughs> Dancy. Yale, Portland, Dancy? They were living under the same roof. Well, 30 seconds is all I need, Doctor. Okay, I'll, I'll wait for your call. Is that Evan Howard? Coma. Dancy? He's still not home, but he's got two shows at the Balladeer tonight. Uh, we all met at the summit and agreed we'd arrived. But at the gate, they asked me who I was. I said, I'm the Loch Ness Monster, a Scottish wetback, a Mexican plum pudding, a dam in the river of convention. I said, I'm a cheater who prospered, a cog in the system, a Chinese smorgasbord, a man who delivers dissension. I said, I'm a negative thinker. Of that, I am positive. A killer who couldn't. A killer who wouldn't. A man who deserved your attention. <laughs> Daddy, baby. I see you back again, pretty. Joey, lace me one eggnog, please. You know, in 1964, Mr. Dancy, I hitchhiked from Berkeley to listen to you right here. Oh, a dash of masochism blighted your youth. I was a primitive performer in those days, my friend. No, no, you were good even then. You were quite a spellbinder. Oh. The Wicked Witch of the North Beach would offer you one, but... Um... Lieutenant Stone, Inspector Keller. We're looking for Jenea, Mr. Dancy. What's a Jenea? <laughs> the, the sign outside says you do two shows tonight. I sure hate to see you miss the second one. One four four zero Fremont. 1440 Fremont. I thank you. My pleasure. Mike. Now that was a joint you were smoking, wasn't it? Looked like one, smelled like one. Well, now, are you uh, finally getting a little soft in your old age? Or why didn't you bust him? For what? Possession of oregano? Get out of here. Fremont. 
Chinese laundry. I see, I see. It's a Chinese hand laundry. It's like the oregano. It's a put on. We've been had. I know, I know we've been had, but why? <laughs> Where's Dancy? He's split. What time's the second show? Well, there ain't gonna be one. Uh, can you guys keep it down? I don't want to lose the rest of the house. Well, where is he now? Well, I'm not sure. <laughs> you better get sure. Come in, Lieutenant Stone, Inspector Keller. I trust the grim and nerve-wracking aspects of your profession have indulged your sense of humor, my friends. There's much to be said for Chinese laundries. And oregano. The van goes upside down. I spend a good deal of time on my head. Uh, can I offer you anything? Information, of course, but um, maybe something reckless. Uh, five minutes worth where um, three human beings might just sit down and salve the ills of the world. Mr. Dancy, it's been a very, very long day. Did Ebenauer fall, or was he pushed? We never mentioned Ebenauer. Come on, Lieutenant. The word's all over North Beach. Janae is your prime suspect. All we want to do is talk to her, Mr. Dancy. Dancy, if I make it rhyme, will you understand that the sooner we locate this girl, the better off she is? The poets don't rhyme much anymore. I don't even know if they reason. The game's over, I know it. But I don't think you'll find her just now. Not until she sorts things out for her own satisfaction. Well, look. Does she work? City of Paris. Never misses a day. Sorry you had to wait so long. Police, right? Uh, yeah. Jungle Grapevine. It's the first time in ages we had to show the entire collection. I hope you weren't bored. No, 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 not at all. You see, um... Well, actually, this is the first time I've ever been to one of these. Really? See anything you liked? Leading and tasteless. No wonder models have the wrong kind of reputation. Oh, that's all right. Uh, did you have to go to school to learn this job? Profession. Paying a lot better than a graduate medical student makes his first few years. <sighs> You're looking a lot better than any medical student I've ever seen. Thank you. 
And I don't even know your name. I'm Inspector Keller. Inspector what Keller? Stephen. I like Stephen better. Uh, I've never heard uh, the name Jenea before. My father invented it. He has a way with words. Now, wait a minute. Is your father Yale Cortland Dancy? You didn't know? No, no. Well, daughter is the one word that seems to have eluded the most extensive vocabulary in the seven western states. But here I am babbling away when you've got the pressures of a great metropolis on your mind. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'd like to talk to you about an artist named Rob Evanhauer. Somebody told me he fell out of his window. Right. We think you might be able to help us. Sure. Anything. Downtown? Please. Let's go. I'm strictly old tops and blue jeans. Give me a few minutes to render unto Paris. What is Paris's? Go ahead. I'll meet you here. You better. Excuse me, Dr. Ford. I've been thinking if uh, there are better facilities, you know, specialists that you would want to call in, anything at all that would help. It's too late. What? I'm sorry. Excuse me, uh, are you related to Mr. Evanhauer? No. No, it's just a friend. Well, could you tell me how I could get in touch with his family? No, I'm sorry, I couldn't. Look, is this important? I'm Lieutenant Stone, San Francisco Police. We may ask for an autopsy. Well, then, then it wasn't an accident? That's what we're trying to find out. Joe, excuse me. Joe, what was the cause of death? Well, off of what I've seen, I'd say uh, the fall. But it could have been the blow to the head. Either way, homicide. Well, you'll want an autopsy then. Well, as soon as we can get permission. See that lady? Has she been here all the time? I think so. Who is she? Oh, she uh, said she was a friend. Well, it turned out I didn't have any. Thanks, Joe. Well, 
is she? Where's the girl? Chinese laundry again. I lost her. Oh, how? She psyched me out. Oh, she psyched you out. She's such a number on me, you're not gonna believe. We'll find her, Mike. She's only an assault suspect. You're wrong. Evan Howard just died. We're in a murder. Well, I got something. Her last name's Dancy. Junaya Dancy? Right. Ingenuity runs in that family. Well, let's see if she can outwit an APB. Come on. <laughs> I don't see her as a murder suspect. Oh, she has really charmed you. Now, huh? look, look, wait a minute, wait a minute. Evan Hour was a hot-headed, lousy artist, right? Owed a lot of people money. Big in the ladies' apartment, a brawler when he drank. I'm telling you, half the telephone directory was out to get him. Motive. Crime of passion. Somebody lost their cool and ran that plaster abstract right through Evan Hour's skull. Somebody, but not Janaea Dancer, yeah? Oh, Mike, <laughs> let's just say, all right, that I'm taking a chapter out of your book. You call it hunch, instinct, anything you want, but I don't think she did it. Okay, buddy boy. Let's say it was somebody else. I still want to know why she ran. Yeah. Four ten. Not in. You the manager. I'm the keeper of the peace. Good. That makes three of us. That don't say search warrant. That says search warrant. Ain't locked, never is. Sea of Tranquility. She ran, but not here. What about the luggage? It looks like it's all here. Look for the earring. Corrigan covered every inch of her studio, didn't find a thing. I think whoever had it dumped it in the bay. Call in and get us a stake out. Right. Mm. Hi, this is Killers. I'll see you in there, please. Do you want some advice? What? Stick to muck shots. Hi, Norm. Listen, we're at 410 Filbert Apartment 960. Uh, it's leased by Janaea Dancy, female, black, age 22. Put a stake out on it for us, will you? Right, thanks a lot. What? You know, that car wasn't there before. Read the license. C-A-S-S-E-Y? Mm-hmm. Cassie. Was that something important? I don't know. Come on, let's find Dancy. Pigeons on the grass, alas. Have faith, they'll come. You both look like you lost something. We have. Your daughter. I lost her first. Evan Hour died. I heard. Find her, Dancy. Find her before we do. What'd you get on that steak on? Last report, no sign of the lady. You got a Rembrandt Van Savino in the outer lobby. You're supposed to be here at 2 o'clock. It's 3 now. Tell him he's late and send him in. Uh, 
You never asked me, Lieutenant. I mean, it's no secret. Some of the best people have records. 14 plain drunk, 7 D&D, &D, 3 assaults, and two of those assaults were on Rob Ebenhauer. I told you, he's a lousy painter. Was a lousy painter. He died a few hours ago. I'll sketch him some flowers. Where were you when Ebenhauer went through the window? Where you found me? People didn't see you there till later. Well, maybe I slept in. Can you prove that? Luckily, yeah. Maybe you were trying to thin out the competition. Now look, Lieutenant, don't you try to Hold pin anything on your on me. Diesel, seven, no, no. And just give us the names to work on. What names? People he was seeing, artists, models, somebody owed him money, anything. I told you, I only knew the guy from Brawls and Bars. That's where I heard names. You know, conquests. He was the type who put a notch in his easel every time he scored. Shh. Names. Oh. Irene. Vicky. Jenea. Lois. Cassandra. Michael. That was a girl named Michael. Uh, I don't know, man. That's, that's all I know. That's all. Thank you, sir. You stay in town and please. Please, now, don't drip any paint on our sidewalks. Oh, I uh, thought this might be a friendly call. So I, uh, well, it's kind of a gift. We can't take gifts. And throw it away. You know, I wanted to see you. I'm the seventh son of the seventh daughter. <laughs> Surveillance on Dancy says he's still moving. Okay, we're ready. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, you laugh. In New Guinea, a pig is sacred. I'm retiring to New Guinea. Well, before you retire, will you please check this through? <laughs> DMV, Sergeant Hasijan, San Francisco Homicide. I need a make on a personalized plate. Yeah. C-A-S-S-E-Y. That's right. Cassie. Whenever I gave your mother a hard time, I always found her here. I remember. You miss her? Yes. But I'm glad she's not here to see me now. Poor Mama. I had no right to either of you. Agreed. We're both older. We're both wiser. You want me to forgive you for ignoring me? All we have is each other. What's the matter, Yale? Getting old? Getting lonely? Afraid there'll be grandchildren you won't even know about? If my reasons for wanting you back are selfish, I suppose they are. All I can do is apologize and promise amends. Sorry, Daddy. No sale. Jenea, Rob Evanhower died. Oh, no. The law's been coming under me like you did it. What do you think? Where'd you get that? Your daughter asked you a question, Dancy. We'd like to hear the answer. I saw it in Evanhauer's studio. Just after, I, just after I launched him through his window into the gutter where he belonged.
right, Mr. Dancy, you've waived your right to an attorney. Tape recorder's rolling. State your name, please. Yale Cortland Dancy. Occupation? Writer, poet, two-bit philosopher, and former father. Were you acquainted with an artist named Rob Evanhauer? I was. And what was your relationship to him? He was my enemy. As a man, as an artist, as a suitor to my daughter. And you were against him seeing your daughter? Of course. He was a crass bumbler. His brush went down for the count every time he hit the canvas. Janae is royalty. A thing apart. She's unique. Like her father. Me, Lieutenant. I'm a beam in God's radiance. My batteries are running low. Before the power failure, Mr. Dancy, in detail, describe the fight you had with Evanhar on the day you claim you went to his studio. Uh, it began when I saw the earrings on a table. I bought them for Janea. When he denied that Janea had been there, I picked them up and I was waving them at him. My proof that he was lying. His hand reached out after I hit him. Clutching, he must have grabbed one. You're lying. No, I'm not. You took all the pieces, put them together, and trumped up this story just to protect Janea because you know she sent him through that window. That's the lie. Why, you're an intelligent man, but you confess without a lawyer? Because I intend to defend myself. Against what? I'm not holding you. Get his daughter. All right. All right, I'll tell you. I'll tell you how it happened. Why it happened. Heaven hour was um, a dichotomous man parading his passions on both sides of the street. Unfortunately, I caught him at it. You're losing me, Dancy. How clear do I have to make it? Clearer than that. Evanauer and I had a homosexual relationship. And gentlemen, I swear by all the fiber in my being that if Janea learns of this, I'll dedicate the rest of my life to killing you both. What about the earring? Well, certain things should be obvious, my friends, like a trout in the milk. The earring, Mr. Dancy. I gave them to him. And gentlemen, my shame is not because of my relationship. It's because of my deceit in concealing it. If she'd known all along, Janea would have been more tolerant. For her to find out now, she'd never forgive me. And she is all I have. It wasn't something he planned, we're sure of that. It just, uh, it happened. It's almost like an accident. You know something, Steve Keller, poor human being, you're really a nice guy. What did you get on that Cassie plate? Cassie for Cassandra, Cassandra for Cassandra Lauritsen. Cassandra Lauritsen for... Mr. Harold Lauritsen? 
That's the one. The judge's wife. Why the courthouse? Because I called the home and the maid said Mrs. Loritzen was with the judge. Now, wait a minute. Wait, wait just a minute. Do we not already have a confessed killer? I pulled the file on Yale Dancy while they were booking him. 38 bookings on D&D. &D. He drinks and gets crazy. 33 of those bookings were with women, and the other five he was alone. Now, does that spell queen to you? No. Yale Dancy is a Don Juan. A Lothario, Romeo, and one gosh darn good liar. What about the earring? Now you got me. That's the one that bothers me. That and Cassandra Loritzen's car parked in front of Janea's apartment. Well, I don't see any connection. You never met Judge Loritzen's child bride, eh? Nope. Well, she's a very plain lady, married to a guy old enough to be her grandfather. All right. Let's say she's into charity work. She goes to one of these benefits, meets a young, good-looking painter. He begins to hustle her. And when she realizes she's been hustled and sees Evan Howard with somebody like Janea Dancy, she hits him with the first thing she can grab. I don't know, Mike. I think you're reaching. No, 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 no. It's beginning to feel pretty good to me. There's a lady with something on her mind. Something's bothering her, all right. Conscience, maybe. Want to get her now? No, sir, not here. If I'm wrong, I don't want to hear about it right here in front of the courthouse. <laughs> Okay. Pacific Heights, and she's heading for the Embarcadero. Now? No, no, just hang with her. You know, Mike, there's still something you haven't told me. What was she doing in Jenea's neighborhood yesterday? Let's start with dancing. All right. If he didn't kill Evan Howard, where do you get the earring? Well, we know it wasn't from Jenea's apartment. Why not? Because we were there. So was C-A-S-S-E-Y. The judge's wife. And Dancy came later after uh, Cassie left it for someone else to find. Stay with her. Let's say that it all fits, right? Right. She has the earring in her hand when she cracks Evan Howard over the head with that statue. Now, what happened to the earring? Dumps it in the bay or plants it on the girl she's jealous of. Welcome back, buddy boy. <laughs> Ferry building. Oh, man. Sorry. Okay, she can't get far. Come on, move it! Excuse what I did, and neither. But he blackmailed me. Forgive me. 
Mind, she's going in the bay. Take it easy. Cassandra Luritsen. Leave me alone. It's not going to solve anything, man. Now, maybe you ought to let your husband know about this, instead of judging yourself. You had no right to take that. You would have found out about it sooner or later. This way, nobody else has to know about it. You can't bury what I did. What I am. I'm nothing to him now. We met at the hospital, remember? What does this mean? What it means, Mr. Dancy, is that we can prove a woman killed Rob Evanhauer. Do you have any idea what you've accomplished with this dreary and dogged detection? Do you? No, sir, I don't. You stripped me of the one decent thing I could do for my daughter. You've erased the noble gesture, nullified the act. You put her in here and so helped me. Okay, okay, Dancy, you didn't do it, she didn't do it. Go home. You hackneyed old ham. You phony, you flagrant fraud. I cried my eyes out thinking you'd be spending the rest of your life behind bars. Now I find out you'll only be leaning on them. Uh, hold on. Have a little respect. After all, I'm a published poet. I'm a man of letters. Who's selling who short? You're my father. Come on.
They deserve each other. Oh, come on. They love each other. Yeah. It's obvious, like... What was that line he said? A trout in the milk. Beautiful. Really beautiful. You like that line, huh? Yeah. Well, that ain't Dancy. That's Thoreau. Come on. Henry David Thoreau. That's where Yale Cortland Dancy stole that line. You can't let this job stifle your mind, buddy boy. You gotta keep yourself free, easy. For cultural pursuits, you know. That's right. Good reading, good music, bowling. But you, that's all you do. A Quinn Martin production, starring Carl Malden, also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars Carl Betts, Geraldine Brooks, Patrick Conway, Norman Alden. Harry Rose. Tonight's episode, The Bullet. I do want to talk to oh, you. Look, I just I want just to get got the dandiest notion. Clipped an article out of the school paper, you know, from your college. Jeff, we're going to get you a better job. Now, look, I read the article. I don't want the position. Well, you haven't given it as much thought as I have. Now, we got to think about Alice, Jeff. Your future. Now, Alice has been a good wife to you. She's gone without. She's put up with our limited means. But head of the department, it's a wonderful opportunity. And the salary is $2,800 a year more than we're making now. Not interested. $2,800. It still only brings your payments to $185 a month, son. No. Jeff, you've got to consider it. Now, look, you're eligible for the advancement. And you've passed up better positions twice now, son. No. It means opening up my records. As long as I stay just what I am, nobody cares what I've been. Jeff... That's uh, I don't have anybody scheduled it. Uh, uh, Jeff, would you mind stepping over here into the kitchen, please, and waiting just a few minutes? Dayton? That's right, sir. Foreman. I 
never met Dr. Gorman, but he's 58 years old. You're not. I made it very clear to Dr. Gorman he was to come in person. This is a confidential relationship. You got a tape recorder in that briefcase? I'll take the file. All right. Just put the gun away. I'll get it. He was on the beat when I was. In um, 1959, he took a bullet in the gut in the liquor store holdup. Drew light duty after that. Let me guess, records, right? Mm-hmm, you guessed right, records. Four years ago, Internal Affairs got wind of something, and he resigned under pressure. Steve, take a look at this. Newspaper clippings. Right up to date on everybody that he's had a record of. My guess is that he nailed everyone who was beginning to make it. Blackmail. Mm-hmm, blackmail. I wonder what it is that makes a guy go wrong. You know somebody tore off today's date already? Say, maybe the lab can make something from the impressions. Mike, how about it? Can we roll with the body now? Yeah, thanks, Doc. Fellas are finished with the pictures and the measurements. That bullet's been pried out. Check the others, will you, buddy boy? I think this one's still in here. Yeah. Charlie, are you gonna be able to pull this one out? Yeah, we'll get it. Lieutenant? Yeah. You might want to have a look at the kitchen floor before we scrape it. There's, we've got some blood evidence in there. But Dayton died over here. What's blood doing in the kitchen? Is this the only place? No, there's some more by the rear door. He must have gone out that way. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where's the slug that came through this door? You got me. We have a clean hole, obvious entry and exit, and the bullet got lost. What do you mean, got lost? Bullets don't get lost. Maybe it's spent and fell. Now we've checked the entire floor. Then there must have been a third person. Someone was here, got hit, and got out with our bullet. We got ourselves a witness. Better than that, we've got a witness with a bullet in. Could have been somebody who worked for him. Could be. Or somebody who's got an appointment on this calendar.
Oliver Lake was here. The young boy that you were supposed to tutor at 1.15. So I blew ten bucks. Well, that's a great attitude. That's really great. Check yesterday. What? I said, did you cash it? I'll be at the store. Jeff, would you come out, please? I'll see you when you get back. I think we'd better talk. Not now. Now. It's just too much money, Jeff. Well, for too long a time. Alice. Later. Okay, okay. Later. Jeff, if it's someone else, then tell me. Oh, you have to. What happened? I'm not sure what happened. There's a bullet in my shoulder. I'll get Phil. No! Doctors have to report gunshot wounds, Alice. But you need medical attention. You can't live with a... a bullet in your shoulder. Well, I'll just have to try. What does that say, Phillips? Phillips, Williams, Borman. Phillips, Williams, and Borman, huh? Good. How about the blood? Uh, the blood scrapings from the kitchen floor are type AB. Well, is that common or uncommon? What? Rare. 4% of the population. 4%. Charlie, what about the bullet they dug out of the wall in the study? Yeah, what about that? 38, police positive. We ran it against Dayton's gun and got a match. One cartridge fired. Dayton shot once. The killer shot twice. The witness's blood is AB. Good. Let's run this type against the three names. Looks like a cop finally found a way to zap the policeman's pension fund. That's not funny, Johnson. You know what the papers and TV would do with that, don't you? I'm sorry, Mike. It's just not funny. Now we got three names, one blood type against three possibles. That's Phillips. We let Healy and Lessing take him. Then there's Borman and, um, who's that? Williams. Williams. Borman and Williams. We'll take those two. I think we're really on solid ground with this Dayton blackmail thing. You gotta be. His books have him dragging down over $40,000 last year. $40,000? $40,000 in dribs and drabs, $100 a month here, $200 there, and the topper is there's no record of him paying any income tax. Hey, Dan, got the coroner's report? Being typed. I'll pick it up in 10 minutes. Let me have what you've got on Phillips and Williams. I'm just looking through this stuff at Dayton's. Looks like a cop finally found a way to make a decent living. Dan. It's five minutes to the coroner's office and five minutes back. That's ten minutes. Okay, Mike. And on the way, check at the desk and find out if any doctors called in on gunshot wounds. Right. Phillips, Albert A. Conviction of child molestation, 63 to the year Chino. Probation concluded in 66. Put Lessing on it. Right. Williams, Jeffrey David, murder two. Conviction, 1943. I was just 18 then. Didn't even have my driver's license yet. I was sitting in the car waiting. I heard the shots from inside the gas station. Three shots. Jimmy ran out, jumped in the car, and we drove up. If any of that bourbon left, Alice, I, I could use something. Of course, I'll get it. 
Well, we sideswiped another car a few miles away. A police car took off after us. And Jimmy lost control. We ran off the road, turned over. Jimmy was killed. I was arrested. And you had nothing to do with the shooting. Pretty hard to deny it. I needed to fix as badly as Jimmy did. What? I was an addict, Alice. Almost two years then. Before it was fashionable. Anyway, the gun was found in the car and the money from the gas station register. It was an easy conviction. How long were you in prison? Four years. Another eight on probation. Hard to believe all of this. Well, maybe it shaped me up. Turned me around, anyway. I stayed straight, went after a degree, got my master's. Then Harley Richards put his neck on the line for me. Junkies with felony convictions are not highly regarded by college administrators, but the, he was determined to have me in his department, and being dean of the college, he kept my records closed. No one there knew about my conviction. I see. No wonder you were so upset when he died. But then, um, this man, this, uh, uh, Dayton, when did he first start calling you? About six years ago. Just when it looked like I was going to start making it. There was some conjecture in the college paper about offering me a full professorship. But you didn't accept? Of course. Of course, that's why you never accepted. Because you were afraid of what the regents might find out. But, but then it had nothing to do with my being too ambitious or or your being afraid of facing responsibility. Oh, darling, I, I've said such awful things to you. I'm so sorry. No, Alice, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't tell you a long time ago. For all the money that went to Dayton, money that should have been yours, all the nice things I wanted you to have. It doesn't matter. It's over now, hmm? All over. Now we just have to get you to a doctor. No. Oh, yes, Alice, we Alice, I'm not going to throw it all away now. Maybe later, when we can get away. After final exams, we can, we can go somewhere and have the bullet taken out. Later. You know, Mike, there's no record of payment on this guy, Borman. Last name on the ledger, today's date. Never kicked in any money, eh? Uh -huh. There's no appointments with him in Dayton's calendar up until now, either. I couldn't find a dirt file on him. Carnage report. Hey, Mike, that stuff I said before about Dayton. Just forget it, Dan. Just forget it. But if by any chance you're thinking of moonlighting out of R&I, &I, just remember that Dayton got his last payment in um, one lump sum. Well, if the end of that finger is either 22 or 32 caliber, that'd make it about right. Carnage says that uh, Dayton was killed instantly, single gunshot wound, apparently 22 to 32 caliber bullet. Even though the slug wasn't recovered, he figures by the clean exit it was a steel jacket. How much money do you have on the body? Uh, 530 cash, another 100 and a half in plain envelope. Time of death? Between 11.30 and 1.30. Got a suspect? Yeah. Dr. Marvin Borman. Spell it out. Manslaughter, drunk driving, 59, did 11 months in probation. But listen to this. 63, conspiracy to commit assault and battery. Borman hired a Jerry Casey to commit assault on Gordon Dawson, a man who threatened to bring malpractice charges. Number one. He's our number one. A guy with a record. He's due for his first appointment with a blackmailer, but he doesn't go in with cash. He goes in with a gun. Come on, buddy boy. We got our first house call to make. Uh, <clears throat> room 105, please. Doctor? Yes? You're late. I had a patient in labor. I'm sorry. It was, it was a difficult delivery. Mine wasn't. Your file's here, and I want the balance on account. Meet me in 
In 45 minutes at the base of the cross on Twin Peaks. Uh, just a minute. Yes. Uh, well, uh, uh, have them wait outside, please. Yeah, go ahead. Problem, Doctor? Do you know any reason why the police should be here? No, do you? 45 minutes, Doctor. Yes? Lieutenant Stone, this is Inspector Keller. I believe you knew a James Dayton. Uh, no, I don't think I do. Well, that's very strange, because you had a uh, two o'clock appointment with him today. Gentlemen, I don't know what this is about, but I'm, I'm pretty certain that I can prove that I was at my hospital from 10 o'clock this morning till just a few moments ago. And I, I never met this man, I'm sure. Never. Well, how about phone calls? Did he call you to discuss your prison record? No. Dr. Borman, may I ask you your blood type? No, you may not ask me my blood type. Well, do you object to being examined by a police physician? Yes, I object very strenuously, just as strenuously as I object to these insinuations. Uh, if I'm a suspect, I'm entitled to counsel. Isn't that the truth? That is the truth, Dr. Borman. And you know, I think that you were probably in your hospital when Dayton was killed. And I tell you what else I think. I think that you hired someone to deal with a blackmailer. That is not true. Here, let I me throw to... that away for you. Wait, no, that's my... Give me... I'm sorry, I thought you were through with it by now. When can I call my attorney? As soon as we've got you booked. Now, you have a right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be held against you in the court of law. Mike, it's the Capri Motel. Piece of paper said room 105. Describe him for us. Yes, I'd say he's about 40, 6'2", graying hair. Nice looking. Smith. Yes, sir, that's the name on the register. Phone calls, no locals. One long distance. Kansas City, I think. Would you have a record of that call? Possibly the name? Yes, I certainly do. The number, anyway. Shall I get the book? It would be very helpful. Thank you, please. City newspaper. Magazines. Mike. Look at this. Compartment. Two cartridges fired. I think we just scored. Scored? Nah. We're not even within field goal range. I guess you're right, circumstantial. But if that bullet matches the gun. Good as an eyewitness. I just hope he doesn't know about our third man, because if he does, there goes our ball game. He's going to be looking for that bullet, too. Get this wrapped up quick. Call a stakeout unit. If he shows, nail him on the spot. <laughs> found a full set of his books. And also, there was $150 in an envelope in Dayton's pocket. 
I have nothing to say, Inspector. Except that I didn't kill him. I believe that. But I think you were there behind that kitchen door. Your blood types A, B, Mr. Williams, was on your record. It was also on the kitchen floor. Mr. Williams, we have the gun that we think killed Dayton. And that bullet could tie it all together for us. I'm sorry, Lieutenant. You know you can be subpoenaed. If you have a case. But you need the bullet for that, don't you? Mr. Williams, I can understand how you feel and why you'd like to keep it quiet and to yourself, but you do understand, don't you? That you could die with your secret. What do you mean? Well, I mean that Mr. Williams... The man who shot Dayton has the original calendar page. And if we can find your husband, so can he. Maybe he's fool enough to stay around looking. <laughs> I think he'd want to be as far away as possible as quickly as he could get there. Well, he's a pro. And pros aren't in the habit of leaving loose ends, and you're a loose end. It's a very uh, good deduction, Lieutenant, but just theory. L Lieutenant, could I just have a minute alone with my husband? I don't have a minute, Mrs. Williams, and I don't think your husband does either. I don't want the coroner to give me that bullet. I want it from him right now, so come along. We're going to the hospital. I don't think so, Lieutenant. You don't have that authority. You're a policeman. I shouldn't have to tell you the law. The law? Mm. I did some checking. And it seems that among our other personal guarantees in this country is the guarantee that our bodies are inviolate. Not even the Supreme Court can force a man to submit to a surgical operation. That's the law, gentlemen. And I'm sure that as officers sworn to uphold it, you won't do anything to make me break it. And Judge Carlson, I got a unanimous verdict. Williams was right. The rights of homo corpus, man's body, are inviolate. Mike, we can't touch him. Homo corpus, huh? Great. <sighs> no way to break him. Not the way I read it. The man we're talking about has coughed up almost $10,000. He had to live with this pressure for almost six years. Yep, that'd make him pretty hard, all right. Yeah, too hard to break just because he's got a bullet in his arm. I guess that makes our job much easier, doesn't it? All we've got to do is find the killer. <laughs> well, maybe Kansas City will come through. Yeah, did you get word yet? Yeah, the number's listed to a guy named Sid Winters. He's a big honcho in the local rackets. They're pulling photos on guys he runs with that fits our description. Let me break your day, Lieutenant. The lab says the gun you brought in could be the murder weapon. Those two shells were high-velocity load, and both bullets did wear steel jackets. Terrific. That means the bullet in William's shoulder could do it for us. Williams, that's the second guy on the list, right? That's right. He took the slug? Yeah, he took it right out of the case. What? The rights of homo corpus. You can't cut a man open if he doesn't want to be cut open. So, Mr. Sunshine, what else you got to brighten my day? How about that? Not much. I uh, did see the other fellow, Phillips. Uh, he was there just like the calendar said, 12 o'clock sharp, got hustled right out. Apparently, uh, Dayton liked to keep everybody apart, didn't want anybody to see anybody else. Kind of like a shrink, you know? Did you check out the Phillips story? He says he went straight to a business meeting. Blessings on it now. You got this Borman in the tank, don't you? We got nothing without the bullet. Borman won't talk and Williams won't talk either. Oh, Lieutenant. Kansas City just called. They're sending in a picture. Coming through, Casey. Well, that looks like the man the motel manager described. There, we'll get it under her nose for a positive. How you doing, Kansas City? Good, good. This is Inspector Keller. Uh, we have some prints we want to check against this man. What's his name? Coyle, Victor Ray. That's C-O-Y-L-E? Right. Well, could you send us his full jacket, please, and maybe uh, run another one of these through? Thank you. We're putting on an APB. Suspicion of murder.
Yes? Would you come with me, please? What for? Just a few questions. Police? That's right. Any place that's private, we... Oh, this is fine. Hey, what's going on? I told you, fellas, I didn't see anybody. Move it. I haven't seen any ID. Who are you? Inside. Seems we're late again. I apologize for keeping you past the hour, but I, uh, I think the extra review will reflect itself favorably in your blue books next week. This will only take a minute. I'd hoped I'd made myself clear, Lieutenant. I guess I don't use the language as effectively as I thought. It's my turn to be clear, Mr. Williams. The man that you won't help us find just killed somebody else. First name on the list, Albert Phillips. He stripped him to the waist after he shot him. Does that tell you anything? He wants that bullet, Mr. Williams. He knows it can convict him. No. No? What do you mean, no? Phillips is dead and you're next on that list. I can't make a public testimony. You don't make sense. You know that, Mr. Williams? You don't make any sense at all. Now, if the lead in that bullet doesn't tell you, the next one will because it's going to be right on target. If I give it to you, what kind of a target will I be, Lieutenant? Now, it's a standoff, gentlemen. You can't use coercion by the school authorities, and you can't give it to the press. That'd be harassment. So, wait here a moment. Let's see, um, there was really only uh, one other thing I wanted to touch on, I guess. You, uh, you remember our discussion of Ezra Pound? He's a poet. I know, I know. Sorry. You're also impressed with his erudition, his, uh, his easy use of recondite images. Something like a Tokyo Rose, right? right. See, I told you, I know. You marvel at this contemporary man's command of the classics, the prodigious amount of work, the undeniable genius, and you all agreed that he was more than deserving of his rank as one of the greatest American poets of the 20th century. Did you ever read any of his poetry? Who has time to read any of his poetry? I barely have time to read booking slips. And yet this man was denied that reputation in his own country. Why? Mr. Miller? Some people thought he was a traitor. Some people? Most people, I guess. No guess, Mr. Miller. Truth. And why? The propaganda broadcast he did for the enemy during World War II. Right. An action which people could not forgive. And what does this tell us about people? Mr. Garrow? No, no. Well, let me bring it a little closer to home. Some of you have uh, found enough in this class to enroll with me for the American novel. But what if you discovered that I had a criminal record? It's criminal when you hand out those low grades, man. <laughs> Well, think about it. Suppose that at one time I had been a junkie. Pretty heavy fiction. Let me lay it on a little heavier. What if I had been involved in a killing and actually been found guilty of murder? Would it still be the same between us? Or would you find yourself saying, this man who pleads for ethical conduct or scrupulous morality, who demands that I plumb the depths of my ability to reason, the same man has been found guilty by society of having acted without reason? Would you uh, say to yourself, why should I listen to him, Mr. Miller? I'd have to think about that. Yeah. And what about the regions? What they think about it? Forget it, baby. School's out. <laughs> I guess the point can't be made any more succinctly than that. What a man is or does in private becomes a part of his public image. Good or bad, it's on the record. 
And whether that's good or bad, I leave you to think about. Well, that's it. Except that it's been a pleasure having you all this semester. Good luck on the final. Maybe we could get out of here, all right? routine about a man's private life and his public image being one. I knew that all the time. But uh, the way those kids reacted, especially at the end, that tells me a lot I didn't know. <laughs> That's tradition. No, sir, no way. That's respect. Hard earned. Yeah. Listen, I remember more than one very long silence at the end of the semester. <laughs> I guess we did get along rather well. Hi, Mr. Williams. Hello, John. That means more to you than staying alive, doesn't it? Yes, that is my life, Lieutenant. Digging, probing, watching them take hold of an idea, taking it further than I knew it could go, loving it. And loving you for helping. If you read my file, you know I went a long way without any help. A long way in the wrong direction. What I can give now makes up for that. Let's get you to a hospital. No, I'm going to be all right. If you'll uh, excuse me, there's some papers I have to get out of my office. Mr. Williams, there's one thing you said in your class, you being someone who demands ethics and morals from other people. Now, how are you able to equate that with allowing a killer to run loose? From what you've told me, Inspector, the killer is interested in only one person now. Now, if that's true and I'm the only one who stands to be hurt by it, that's a risk I'm willing to take. Okay, if he won't keep up his guard, we're gonna have to do it for him. Let's get on the box. Tell him we're staying with him and we'll get a stakeout unit for the house. husband, Mrs. Williams. If you want to see him again, alive, get in.
Yes, I didn't know you'd gone out. I went to the store, Jeff, uh, and... Mr. Williams, I have your wife. He's got my wife. What did he tell you to do, Mr. Williams? Downtown. Corner of Jones and Geary. I stand on the corner. Seven o'clock. He's got Alice. Tell me it, this. Did you see a man at Dayton's? Can you describe him? Six two forty. Graying hair? He said he'd kill her. Don't worry. We'll take care of it for you. Please. Be very careful. We will, Mr. Williams. We will. But do you give the doctor permission to take the bullet out? Stay to the right and slow. straight, Mrs. Williams. Mr. Williams, sit forward. Go. Go! Subject vehicle proceeding west on Gary. Do not intercept. Do not apprehend. Alert inspectors 6368, helicopter 1. on Geary. to the next turn off. Take it. Cut the lights. Where are we going? On the next side road, Mr. Williams. on that thing, find out what the chopper's got. This is 8-1. We've lost contact. Subject vehicle just uh, doused his lights and turned right on next side road west.
I can't see. You don't have to. We're almost there. Look, what you wanted was a bullet. That's why I'm here. And there's no need to involve my wife. You're not a well man, Mr. Williams. Don't talk. Pull up here. Just to the right. Out. This side. Both of you. Right on out to the dock. They're in the open. Let it go. This is 8-1. Have the helicopter hit it! I guess we're out of the woods, Mrs. Williams. Say, uh, yeah, I think your husband's just getting out of surgery about now. Mrs. Williams, we have a radio in the car if you want to find out his condition. Okay, what's the big mystery? Mike, how long have you been a detective? Oh, very funny. <laughs> well, now, buddy boy, you've been with me long enough to know that I work one of two ways, right? Right. Booze or muscle. Take your choice. All right, all right. We're going over to William's house for dinner Saturday night, right? Right. After dinner, we'll be sipping our brandy, congratulating him on how the Regents decided to keep him on, right? That's right, we'll be celebrating a man's whole new life. Exactly. But since when do you buy brandy in a bookstore? No, 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 no. I'm thinking about after the brandy. After the brandy? Yeah. I don't pick up that clue. I bought you a little present. What is it? Open it. Poems, poetry. It's Ezra Pound. Remember Williams talking about him at the school? Yeah, I remember he talked to his class about him. That's yeah. right. That's for you. What? Oh, now, wait a minute. I can't read this. Why not? Listen, rain is drop and stain is slop. Oh, come on now. Wait, wait a minute. What? <laughs> yeah, rain is drop and stain is slop. Skid is bust and sloppeth us. Oh, now, come on. Isn't poetry supposed to be clear and to the point? That's right. Well, I've got something to the point and clear for you, young fella. <sighs> what is this? Sit quietly. You have a right to remain silent. Is that clear? That's clear. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the part of law. Is that to the point? That's to the point. All right, then get going. 